Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today, I'm so excited to have on a 24-year-old from Coal Harbor, Nova Scotia, Canada. His hockey journey has taken him to Canada, the USA, and he is in his first season across the pond and for fun is the leading scorer of the chocolatey Manchester Storm, earning the ink on his new two-year deal that will see him showered in chocolate for the foreseeable future. As a pup captain his hometown Harbor Storm and ran amok, leading the squad in scoring by only 10 points, then earned his way to ruin Naranda of the Q by dominating the U18 loop with Halifax and put up 13 playoff points for fun in only eight games played. He didn't just play in ruin Naranda, he became a champion of the Q and then went out there and won her all the Memorial Cup while putting up a point a game in the tourney, confirmed Gamer. He was a Cape Breton eagle, like a bunch of legends I know, and was set for another run at her before all the baloney. Jumped in to pro with the Maine Mariners and got them to the playoffs both years and earned a call up to the A. But he is best known for what he's doing with the chocolatey Manchester Storm, and he is set to be one of the best forwards in the AIHL for years to come. Welcome back to the shed, Tyler Heinem. <laughs> Quite the intro. Thank you. Hey, that was long-winded. A lot of stuff on there. <laughs> um, I get into how we know each other. Um, had you on way back, episode 303. So that was the off-season, eh? Yeah, I think that was right in the middle of the summer after I signed with Manchester. Yeah. And then I'm that creepy stalker fan of the storm that got right in there, eh? <laughs> you say that that was 303? Yeah. What is this? 366. Christ, you've been busy. I am busy. <laughs> and it's fun every time. <laughs> I don't know. I like doing it. It's fun, you know? No, I'm happy to be back on. Yeah. Uh, well, you earned your way back to the shed. And uh, I always say that I select, try to be selective of who I have on. And um, you see a lot of hockey pictures in my life these days. And um, you're having a good year, eh? Yeah, yeah, no, it's been going pretty well so far. I'm, uh, I'm definitely with happy with uh, the way things have gone, and hopefully, uh, have a strong finish. You must be happy if you sign two more years. I was interested when they announced that. You know, you know why? Yeah, um, yeah, I, th I think I just, I really like being in Manchester. I think uh, the organization's treat me really well. Um, I think uh, Ginner, uh, Ginner's put a lot of trust in me, and. Uh, you know, I get to play in a lot of those key situations and, you know, as a, as a competitive guy and a hockey player, those, that's, that's kind of what I want to do and we'll, the situations you want to play in. So whether it's power play or PK or six on five or five on six and stuff like that, I think uh, it's been fun to be able to be a guy that's relied on in those situations. And, uh, and yeah, I just kind of want to keep building on that. And I think it's a, it's a good spot for me to grow my game and, and, you know, be able to play in those situations and grow. Um, well, that that does hit home is when I was the guy on teams, hockey was way more fun. Like when you knew you you got a power play and you're like, I know I'm going, you don't even have to say anything. That's, that's really fun. <laughs> yeah. That, that was kind of the biggest thing. I like, I'm having fun here. Like the living's great. The organization's great. Hockey, hockey's fun. So, uh, you know, hockey's I think uh, the grass is always, yeah. And the grass isn't always greener. So, uh, you know, and you're in a situation, you're enjoying it and you're having fun. Why, why not come back for another year? I agree. Um, the reason I thought it was interesting is because, well, I know a lot of stuff in my shed that I don't maybe let on, <laughs> um, but I know teams that will sign guys to multi-year deals, but they'll only announce them for the next season. And sometimes they don't even announce the guy for months. And I thought it was neat that you don't have to hide anything. You can tell everybody I'm here in Manchester for two years. And for me, I think it makes sense as an organization because then you're going to say, Hey, look, we got one of the best forwards in the league. We got captain Critch. Hopefully he's coming back for years. And it's like, we have a core here and come join us because we got a squad, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Obviously that was the, that's the first time I've ever signed an extension um in europe and stuff so I, I wasn't sure how it was going to go down or if i was going to have to keep it a secret and stuff and then uh no they they basically released it pretty much the day after it was done so it was that nice that it i uh, didn't, you, have to, right? didn't have to keep it yeah just get it out there and you don't need to keep it quiet and uh 
and yeah, um, kind of think uh, I think there's somewhat of a plan in place to bring uh, bring a core of guys back, and and I'm excited about the future at the Storm, and hopefully, uh, hopefully some guys hop on board. Yeah. So when we talked. And I told you that chocolate gets thrown on the ice after wins in Manchester. And you're like, okay, buddy, <laughs> it really does happen. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I believed you, but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't too sure the extent, but yeah, it, uh, Isn't it a lot of chocolate gets thrown. <laughs> yeah. Like more, more than the guys can eat. So it's, it's kind of funny. There's just always a, there's always a big box in one of the spare rooms and it's just filled with chocolate and, well, if the storm Sometimes. have too much and, uh, you know, they want to surprise my fellas, they can send us a box of chocolate and I'll give it to my guys. You know, they've earned it this year, too. <laughs> uh, I think it's so funny, though. Uh, so you would add, I'm pretty sure I'm good with my chocolate game here. I obviously haven't re-listened way back when we chatted the first time, but you were a Kit Kat guy, weren't you? I think I, I think I said Mars on the pod, but I'll eat really? anything. They're all good. I've definitely yeah and i've uh i've kind of just whatever after every home win try and try maybe a different one and get your uh get culturalized in some different chocolates i i agree though i i didn't know i lived over there for two years and i didn't really get into the chocolate bar game that much um until i went over to cardiff for batchy's testimonial and got the chocolate thrown on the ice for my u9 gals um i had never tried the different uk chocolate bars and there's some interesting ones out there isn't there yeah, there is. It's been uh, it's been fun to try a few different ones. And uh, what's your and, you? So you got a favorite one you've never tried? I think my favorite one that I've never tried before. It's not even a chocolate. It uh, these candies called like Percy Pigs. You get them at M and S. Percy and, Pigs. Geez. Yeah, it's not even just chocolate anymore. People are people are throwing Skittles candies all that kind of stuff on the ice so yeah i tried these things and they, they don't have them back in north america and they're they're good they're kind of like a, a squishy taffy kind of peeling well, candy they're good the one chocolate bar that really hit home for me was uh and my gals loved it uh is the boost uh just because of yeah. the saying shed boost when guys come on and then run amok <laughs> um i yeah. i you know the boost will always have a soft spot for me because shed boost you know and you and critch the don't seem to good. need a shed boost you're just here for sport because you and critchy have really been doing it right <laughs> yeah we started playing together at the beginning of uh at the beginning of january and it's it's been a lot of fun so far he's uh he's, Looks he's like pretty it. easy to play with and uh we've definitely had some success so hopefully try to keep that going it's nice when you find a guy you really click with, you know? Yeah. I think, uh, we just kind of feed off each other's energy and, you know, like, uh, the work ethic and energy. And then I think our skill kind of just takes care of it. But, uh, you know, he's, he's a captain and he's a leader and he's a guy that you can just kind of get behind and follow and let him follow the lead and just kind of fall in line. And, you know, it's been, uh, it's been really good playing with him. Well, folks, just so everybody's aware, I have sponsored Captain Critch this year, the pro the first podcast ever to sponsor a pro hockey player, and I have not paid my whole bill yet, <laughs> and I need help. <laughs> I need more fun money to pay the Chocolate Manchester Storm back because I said I would pay a certain amount, and I have not. And I saw there's only eight games left in the regular season, man. That's not good. How, how you know? So um, I'm having a raffle at aleshockeytails.com, and it's a two ales and hockey tails jersey with Walton 18 on the back whether you want that jersey or not support your chocolate storm because i got to pay my bill i said i wouldn't i'm a man of my word and um i need to sell more tickets at aleshockeytails.com and um for me man when you guys win it's weird for me i was out of the game i didn't care who won hockey games i didn't care what was going on in the hockey world i was just living doing my thing and now i like when i know you guys are playing at home i like check the score throughout the game because i want it to storm chocolate you know because <laughs> i think it's so neat that that happened from talking to critch like last season <laughs> You know, no, it's a it's a cool tradition, and the the home games are fun. And, uh, we we've been pretty good at home lately, so we've gotten uh, gotten a decent amount of chocolate in the in January, February. Yeah. Um. Well, then I'm gonna bring this up now because uh, we just said you've been winning your games at home. You guys lost a game at home. I think it might have been to Cardiff, my squad. <laughs> yeah. And um, Finner put out like a statement like you guys aren't good enough, and I was like. I read it and I'm like, man, that must have been a tough game because I'm pretty sure I've seen Chocolate Storms the last couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, I I think we we've won five of our last six at home, and that was that was the one that we didn't win. But that was uh, <laughs> you yeah, really it, did it, win it. <laughs> 
yeah, it, was, it wasn't a good night for us. We just didn't we didn't really play with like the fire and the compete that. You know, you, you, you're okay with not losing every night, but if you're if you're just kind of laying over and dying, that's that's kind of not what that's not what we were brought in to do, and that's not what our team's about. I think we're a, we're a hardworking crew that, at least if we're gonna go down, we're gonna make it hard on them. So we're gonna go down swinging. You know, we we didn't do that that night, and and fin, yeah, Finner put that out, and it was a uh, it was a hundred percent accurate and called for, and I think we responded really well. I think uh, two yeah. or three days later, we beat Belfast at home. 5-2 and then uh and then we beat Dundee in the next game. Unfortunately, we went to Belfast this past weekend and we lost, but again, I think I think we battled. We went down swinging at least. So, you know, I think uh well, I you think, guys were I down 2 worked. nothing to Belfast was, there, right? You were down 2 nothing and came back. You stormed back, they could say in this third. Yeah, we were down 2 nothing heading into the third and then we got a few big goals in the power play and then just kind of rolled from there. So, it was a it was a big game for the group. I think it was a it was a gut check from 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 the team and you know, I think uh, didn't call it our character, but our, you know, we you get called out in public, and and I think that those are the games that you see what you're really about. And I think uh, I think we came yeah. together really well as a team, and and uh, that was a that was a good night for us. Yeah, no, it's yeah. When you have a game like that, the problems start when people start pointing fingers. Instead, it was uh, it was about the whole team, and the whole team came out and played the next game and won. Um, I like that. Yeah. Um, it was to bring up my stuff because I know you know I got the most famous under thirteen team in the world, the Concord Canucks. <laughs> um, we our last regular season weekend, we had two games against the top two teams, but we added um, an exhibition game against one of the other top teams in Ontario from out of the area. And we drove all the way there on a Friday night and laid an absolute egg. Like, no jam, no effort. Abs- it was brutal. And it was tough to be involved in and watch as a coach. And you know what? I said, let's move on. We have a big game tomorrow. This can't happen again. You guys know why you lost. You didn't try hard enough. We didn't compete. And uh, then we went and did beat the top two other teams in our league the next two nights. And, uh, you know, sometimes teams lay an egg and it's how you respond, right? Because laying eggs hurts. It comes out of your butt. They're round. They're, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we definitely laid an egg. And, you know, uh, Finner let us know that that's not acceptable um, for the storm and and for us in the room. So, yeah, I think it was really good that we came together as a group. And and even in that game, it would have been easy to, you know, shit's not going well and, down to nothing going to the third it would have been easy to roll over and die but we didn't and we, yeah. we came right back and you know i think that's 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 what our team that's what the group that we have is all about and i was yeah. uh it was pr- proud to be part of the team that night for sure um and was i'm pretty sure we're talking about the same night was that jake's birthday and up on the big screen it had a picture saying happy birthday to the director of shed marketing <laughs> Yeah, it was. That was funny. I, I think big <laughs> Do you guys, guys had a laugh when you see that. stuff like that? Because it, it makes my heart race and my knees shake. But like if I was playing in that game and you'd been to the shed and you know it's just me talking to you in my shed and then you see stuff like that on a big screen in a pro hockey game, that's funny stuff, isn't it? <laughs> I was gonna say the the guys that understood it for sure thought it was uh thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> the director of shed marketing. Keep up the good work, Jake. <laughs> you know, takes everybody to win. And if he wouldn't have supported me from the start and just started launching chocolate, who knows if it would become a staple of the Manchester storm, right? <laughs> yeah. I think Jake, Jake was on the ice with us for the circle there at the end. He was right next to Mikey Coral and got to, got to say hi to him and see how he was doing. He's a good kid. Oh yeah. Um, I'm wondering if Crutch thinks I like, so when I was in Cardiff, I used to call my neighbor, um, my creepy stalker neighbor. Cause he had my Jersey and everything. Um, I'm starting to wonder if Critch is a little creeped out by me, you know, by sponsoring him. I don't really know him. I've only had him to the shed. And then like I post stuff, he never shares it. And you know, sharing's caring, Critch. I think he's scared of me. Good thing I'm over on this side of the pond or he might get a restraining order. Eh? <laughs> I think maybe he's just not, not as into the social media as the young guys. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I think it's funny. Um, I still think it's funny. I sponsor the captain of your team and that like, I don't know if I, if I was playing with him and you're scoring goals and like some of the pictures I've seen when <laughs> your poster picks or you're scored and he's skating at you and I could see my logo and it just makes me giggle every time. <laughs> you, know? like you picked, you picked a good one for sure. Hey, I got good taste in men. Check out the roster of shed guys and gals behind me, you know? <laughs> 
I know what I'm doing. Um, so don't forget to buy your raffle tickets at aleshockeytails.com, folks. We need to sell a lot more raffle tickets if I'm going to pay Finner. And I've seen Finner fight on YouTube. I don't want any part of that. Don't need him coming after me, you know? <laughs> He's uh, a tough customer, I think. Well, just because I'm his biggest fan we got to talk about critch one more time before we move on just so he's really creeped out by me he did just make his debut with team gb and you know this is the guy sponsor he goes there his first game with team gb he runs a muck wins player of the match and scores a bunch of goals and um like team great britain's like my favorite team to cheer for um i even have the swag i got the team apparel from one of the shed guys and um to see him make his debut um after i sponsor him and then run a muck that's pretty neat eh yeah no it was uh we were, we were definitely proud of him as a group uh it was cool to see him get that opportunity and go there and have so much success and you know i think they they like won the preliminary round robin tournament or whatever you want to call it they won the grouping so it was cool to see uh the team gb team have so much success and um, for Critch to be obviously a big part of that and scoring, scoring, I think in every game, I think, um, they scored a lot of goals. Was, uh, was, was awesome to see. Yeah. He, he's been hot lately for sure. Um, yeah, it's neat for me though. You've seen t- team GB have success this year, man. I've been watching it for like a decade now and it's crazy what they've done. Crazy, crazy. It's a movie. It's a Disney movie. They wrote the script in real life and nobody's starting to make the movie yet. It's horse manure. Anywho. Um, what else do I got here? This week, you were the number three goal of the week. I saw it. You're righty, just like myself. Pretend you're going to go wide, hard cut to the middle. Was that a bit of a toe pick or a speed wobble? I think it might have been a speed wobble, yeah. yeah. Almost, you, almost well, you cut pretty it, hard to the it, middle and back. you almost lost her, eh? <laughs> yeah, o- almost lost it, but regained balance and got a shot off, luckily. Yeah, top titties. Scoring's fun. <laughs> I think it's neat, though, that they have, like, goals of the week and stuff now. I don't recall that when I played there, that, like, people can see the goals of the week and stuff. And it must be nice, um, like, for your mom back home and whatever, like, to be able to watch you score goals over there, right? Yeah, it's been good. I think the league marketing and social media team has done a pretty good job. I think they they promote the games pretty well. Like, every every time there's a game, there's the starting lineup, there's a preview, um, there's, like, the post-game uh they always post like the game winning goal. They post the, the, uh, the coaches interview, um, plays of the week, saves of the week. So they're, uh, they're busy and they're definitely trying to grow the, grow the league as much as they can. Well, it's, it is nice for the players about stuff's out there to see. Um, but anywho, um, moving on is currently you guys sit in seventh place. The Cardiff Devils are in second place. We need things to change. This is not the first round matchup we are looking for. So figure your stuff out. You guys are not finishing seventh if they finish second. So you guys move your way up on I would there, okay? <laughs> we're trying. We're trying. We're uh, you know, I think our, our game's definitely trending in the right direction recently. And I think uh, you know, we've we've found the way that we want to play. Um, and I think it's just about going out and executing and competing at this point. So um, yeah, we have a big 15, 20 games left, whatever, whatever the exact number is. Um, just, yeah. It's just, yeah. Just taking it game by game and, and trying to get as many points as we can here. You guys have had some roster shakeups this year though. eh? like, um, was it Santeri? We were getting chocolate from Finland and then Andreas higher. We were getting chocolate from Norway and they're both gone. And then you guys have brought in a couple new fellas, eh? Yeah, I think we I think we hit the maximum, like whatever the whatever the max number is. But yeah, we've definitely had a fair share of roster shakeups this year. Um yeah, whoever was buying that chocolate for uh for Santeri, I think they must have bought a 50 pack or something because they're still getting Carl Fats just thrown on the ice whenever we win games. So that's hockey. That's baby. funny. <laughs> that, oh man, that honestly, that people will listen to us talk and then order chocolate from out of country and then chuck it on the ice like Oh, that's just so fun. I had my uh, under 13 boys on and asked, uh, I'm hoping some of the parents listened and I'm, I'm hoping to have chocolate thrown here on my home soil because I only see it on my little device. I don't see it in real life. And I'm, we have our first playoff game tonight. I'm hoping that we run amok and that these parents get involved. You know, the siblings think about how much fun it'd be for your little sister or brother to be chucking chocolate on the ice after a win, you know, memorable stuff. You guys are starting playoffs already. Yeah, man. 
We got uh That's a short season, no? Well, we it's a 18 team round robin, so we have seven games. You play each team once. Okay. And then uh, okay. the top two teams will play a best of three. And then whoever wins that goes to the All Ontario tournament. Okay, gotcha. So it's no, not it's not no that close to being over, I guess. Yeah, it's we still have a bit of time here, but like our first two games are against the two of the top teams. So like tonight is a huge match. Um, so if we want to get out of this, it's time to give her. But uh, one thing that was neat for me too, talking about my own stuff again, because that's what I like to do, and everybody can not listen if they don't want. Um, my uh, horse, my captain, got called up to the under fifteens. Um, I just had him on with uh, Jacob, my two horses, last week. And Shed Boost, he gets called up to under 15 and plays his first game of body contact with kids two years older than him. And he went out there. He w- played great positionally. He played a smart game, didn't try to do too much, was dumping it in, playing old school. And I tell you, man, I couldn't be a prouder coach when I saw my guy be able to go fit into a new team and play with kids two years older than a man i was the proudest coach ever <laughs> you know yeah that's awesome that's what you, that's what you got to do when you're called up just keep it simple and yeah. blend in yeah and if, for me it was like when i went pro there was a few things i had been taught that didn't translate to the pro game and um you know then not they lost their trust in me because i was doing things not the way they wanted and to see him go out there and play like that it warmed my heart you know anywho you were a Cape Breton Eagle for a short time. You got traded there for the playoff run. Um, but like, that's, I guess that's my favorite Q team. Cause all my fellows are legends there. Haddaddy, Cully and Dicko. Yeah. They had a uh, Steven Dixon night a few weeks ago. That Isn't funny. that cool, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> seeing the, seeing the team account post a bunch of interviews from when he was like with the Eagles was pretty funny. And he is one of the all-time gems of the game. Hockey yeah, needs him back reti- in the game. Retired. I yeah. know. We need him back in the game somehow. But then I see Joey Haddad, my roommate, while I'm in Cardiff on the road. And he, we got some funny stories together. Uh, <laughs> that if I ever get him on, he he has a, his favorite Wally story that I would love for him to tell. But um, <laughs> he's like the, what, business general manager or something there now. Yeah, he, I'm not sure what the exact title is, but he got in there with the uh, with the team office and I, some sort of uh, team brand ambassador. Yeah, um, he, he got some like bigger role too now, I think. But yeah, and then I saw Cully's jerseys retired there. So all my fellows, he was my babysitter in Cardiff. Yeah, Cully's awesome. Cully Cully was a, an assistant coach that that half season I played in Cape, so it was good uh, good to learn under him. He's a good guy to learn from. He knows how to hockey. <laughs> And he's yeah. still in the game. He's running hockey stuff, isn't he? Yeah, I think I think he stepped away from the Eagles, but I think he's running his own like developmental programs yeah. and stuff. You should see how scared of the shed that guy is. It's wild. He says I'm relentless. And all I do is text him like every few months, is it time? Is it time? <laughs> <laughs> He'd be a good guy to have on. Wouldn't he? He was my babysitter. He'd play mini hockey with my son. We'd play Mario Kart together with the sun he even one time for halloween set up a whole haunted house with her the perv in uh their apartment for my son for trick-or-treating um he is a definite shed guy that is scared of the shed but there's lots of them out there <laughs> uh who do you think the best player in the league is oh tough question um, i guess Boom. i guess i'll go on the cop out answer i uh, can't say i'm good buddies with bomb <laughs> no, I'm go. I'll go. I'll go with uh, Balmas on Sheffield. I think he. I think he's top two or three in scoring, and he's one of my buddies from Nova Scotia. And we play on a summer league team together, so I'll go. Uh, I'll give Balmas a little, little nod there. A little tickle. Um. Well, if he's from Nova Scotia, it's probably a good dude. Seems like all the guys I meet from out there, are my cup of tea. You know. Yeah. So, nice when the guys that are running mucks are the good guys. Um. That team's really having a year though, eh? A bunch of punks. That orange squad. Yeah, they they've had our number so far this year. So they've we'll, had, ev- uh, they've had everybody's soon. number. Yeah, horse manure. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, the Greggy bus. <laughs> what do you think of that bus? It's uh definitely the nicest bus I've ever been on in my entire life. So, 
Um, I think it's been, pretty, pretty, it's I, pretty neat. I'm like on the team. I, uh, I had a podcast with him while he was on the bus and I got a whole tour and everything. It's like, I'm on your squad. I'm just over here. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty funny. I think we have like the best travel in the league and we have the nicest bus and sleeper bus and everything with Greg's fully loaded kitchen and everything. So it's, it's pretty funny how, uh, how, uh, intense it is, but it's, uh, we get treated pretty well in terms of, uh, in terms of travel. Um, well, he sent me pictures of like when he has it all dolled up for you guys and like, he'll have meals ready. eh? Oh yeah. He'll bring, uh, bring chocolates, bunch of water, um, hot dogs and stuff after the game. It's great. Hot dogs on the bus. eh? Yeah. They got a little crock pot. We'll just throw, throw some in. They're pretty crock good. Pot hot dogs. That doesn't sound good. They <laughs> work. I don't know. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> um so when you were cape breton eagle that's like right by your home eh we probably talked about this last time but i can't remember everything i talk about yeah um it's uh it's it's still like four or five hours away but it's in in the same province which was nice english community and stuff so that was that was a bit of a change which was nice i find it very neat that that one team is where all three of those guys played and then we all became cardiff devils but um when I looked at their retired numbers, because they had Stephen Dixon Knight, they didn't retire his number, but they had Stephen Dixon Knight, which is wicked awesome. Um, you never forget nights like that. Um, but Cully and Mark Andre Fleury are the only two jerseys retired. Yeah, pretty pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool company to be in for Cully, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> uh Cully, what a scaredy pants. <laughs> Um, but you only got to play 21 games played. And then is that when all the baloney started? Cause you were a plus 15 and 21 games played. So it seems like you guys had a squad. Yeah, we, we, we definitely had a pretty good team. Um, you know, it's, it sucks. You, you don't know how that would have ended, but, um, yeah, we had, we had a good team. We were a confident group going into playoffs, but yeah, that's when COVID shut us down with about five or six games left in regular season. Brutal. Um, Okay. What's the worst burn in the league? Let's piss people off. Uh, it depends what you're talking about. Like dressing yes, room. I, I know use. it's up to you what we're talking about, because for me, I would tell you that I didn't like playing in Nottingham. It was warm. There usually wasn't fans unless it's playoff weekend. I'd like playing there in playoff weekend, regular season game snooze fest. I, I, I don't think I'm going to put Nottingham as the worst, but uh, I'll uh, I'll say Guilford. It's just really dark. Boards are super there. hard, and, and yeah, we we've hit some traffic a few times going there, and uh, didn't uh, didn't get there very very long before the game. So we've had we've had some tough experiences there. So I'll say I'll say Guilford. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the only other ones that you know, there's one I know you can't change it because it's Scotland and they love curling, but. Having the curling rings on the ice, uh, I didn't enjoy it that much. Yeah, yeah. When we watched, uh, we'd watch video. We didn't have any of them in preseason, but when we watched video on other teams, kind of the start of the year, I thought uh, I saw the curling rings. I I really thought it was going to bother me more than it does. But I think uh, once you get in the game, you don't even really notice it. I, uh, at least I find. No, I didn't. It wouldn't affect much. But um, then I saw the Cardiff Devils ice this year, and you know, people in Cardiff, I think there's probably some that uh, don't understand why I sponsored the storm. They don't understand why I'm supporting you guys and having you to the shed and I haven't had many devils on. Um, I am a Cardiff devil. They had a Wally night. I'll never forget that. That is the main reason why I have my shed. But like, I would consider you guys the underdogs. Um, I saw their ice at the start of the season in Cardiff. There had to have been 50 different logos logos of sponsors on that ice. And they're, they're all paying quite a bit. I don't know. Just for a logo on a jersey, it could cost some money. Um, so, like, when you guys probably don't have the same budget, you're in the arena I used to play in, basically, the big blue tent. Um, and you guys, what, are rolling three lines, right? And the rest of these teams are rolling four lines and usually have some health bombs in the crowd, too, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't mind cheering for the underdogs, folks. Um, Cardiff finished ninth the year before I got there, and then we won the Challenge Cup and finished second. So um, I do have a soft spot for the underdogs, and um, I like seeing uh, 
you guys win. And I also like seeing Cardiff win. Um, I, I cheer for both of you, and that's why you guys can't play each other in the playoffs, okay? Well, till the finals <laughs> or something. I don't know. Right? Don't do it. What curve do you use? Uh, P28. The, uh, kind of the big one. Is that the toe one? Yeah, it's got a pretty big toe on it. I looked at that the other day at the kid sticks it. Okay, not for me. Uh, <laughs> what's your favorite drill in practice? I'm an aspiring minor hockey coach here, you know? Uh... Uh, Ginner's got some. Ginner's got some good ones. I'll say. I'll say a six pass, two on one. Basically, just get get the crossovers going, and then get to come down on a two on one with the, with a decent amount of speed. So, it's uh, it's kind of a drill we like to do the day before a game. Just kind of get things six snapping pass, around. And, two on one. Are we like regrouping in the neutral zone, or what are we doing? It's kind of like uh, you basically do like a cross and drop, and then. Um, you get one regroup down kind of at the other end and you just keep your speed crossovers all basically down and back. And then you come right back down on a D with, with a lot of speed. So that's it. It's, I think it's, it's kind of a tough one for the D's, but I think the forwards like it. Okay. I think I got a pretty good idea what you're doing there. Um, okay. So your goaltenders this year, um, I would say goaltending wins championships. It looks like you guys got what you need. Wenny is got a nine, two, four save percentage. Eh? Yeah, Winnie, Winnie's, Winnie's, you know, I take that back what I said earlier. Winnie's the best player in the league. He gives us a, uh, he gives us a chance every night. Uh, I think, uh, you know, he's the backbone of our team. I think it, it's no, it's no, um, there's no hiding that. He's, yeah, it's no secret. He, he's the backbone of our team and he gives us a shot every night. And I think that's all uh, you can ask uh, for in a goalie. Right? Uh, however many wins we have, he's the main reason for every single one of those. Um, yeah, he he's awesome, and he he bails us out night after night and play after play. He's he's awesome. He's uh he's a great teammate and a and an amazing goalie. And then the kid Alex Oldale stepped in um when when he was out for a few games and went three and one at twelve yeah, years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> twelve years old. Yeah, yeah. No, that was good. We we needed those performances out of Alex uh, when his name was called on. Obviously, when 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 he's healthy, he's He's uh he's more of a backup, but uh, yeah, I mean, we, it uh, takes win, everybody to win, win, right? When a guy goes down, you need someone to step up. Yeah, and uh, we needed Alex for those two weeks, and and he did step up big for us, so that was good to see. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I totally agree. So here is just this is my type of question, and it's random, but what's the kebab game like in Manchester? <laughs> Do you ever eat any kebabs in Manchester? Uh. I, I've had, I'd say maybe two or three, but uh, Good enough be better. <laughs> more, no, no, like, uh, no, like, I haven't had any, uh, any, any like good, good ones. They've more been late night pizza shop ones. So I understand. Yeah. Yeah. The UK's got to up their kebab game, man. Cardiff, I was doing it just for sport because, you know, but Germany's kebab game is a whole different league, man. Um, guy sent me a picture of his, of his uh, donair kebab yesterday and who who did it get me going <laughs> anywho no I'm, I'm i'm sure one done done good by a good spot would uh would hit the spot for sure you just yeah you, know, you gotta find the honey hole um so what is yeah. your favorite restaurant in manchester oh i'll give uh i'll say oxford road cafe it's a little little breakfast lunch spot um somewhat close to our rank so i think the guys like going there um pretty often okay yeah, it's nice going out to eat with the fellows after a practice, eh? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's been fun. Hopefully usually try to get out for, uh, for lunch with the guys at least once a week or something like that. So it's a big part nice. of We've tried a few different <laughs> spots. Yeah. Yeah. No, we've tried a few different spots, but I'd say Oxford road is, has been, uh, been the hot spot for our team this year. Fair enough. Every team's got those spots. And, um, I, I think it's a huge part of a season is getting out to eat with the fellows. Um, okay. Let's see here. What else do I got? Um, what do you think is the best atmosphere outside of the chocolatey storm shelter? Cause we know that's the best, right? Yeah. Um, Oh, well, I hate to say it, but it's prob- probably Sheffield. They pack it every single night. Obviously they're, they're having a good season and, um, 
I haven't been here when maybe they're not playing as good as they are. But yeah, the the times we've gone into Sheffield, it's it's packed to the roof with orange everywhere every night. So you know their their fans come out and support that team. Pretty um, passionate. Uh, they do. They have a huge fan base. It's actually wild how yeah. many fans they get. Um, but yeah, they are having a, quite the year and I'd say winning always does that. It creates a buzz and I think the chocolate creates a bit of a buzz too. It's like when people haven't seen hockey and they go to a game and then they watch it, you guys win and then all of a sudden chocolates get thrown on the ice. I'm like, well, what's this? <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it's, it's been really good lately. I think, I think that we had over 2000, pretty much close to a sellout there on Saturday night against Dundee. So that was really fun and fun to be a part of. And yeah, we appreciate the support in Manchester for sure nearly a sellout against Dundee. You guys are doing her. Um, that's good. Um, yeah. Keep her up then. Uh, poster picks. <laughs> uh, I, I just get such a kick out of the poster picks. I see these days. It's the one you said, I believe this is the game against Belfast when you guys come back and win it. And you've just scored. And then there is a guy lag in the net. Looks like he's crying. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, that was on the empty netter. And I think he kind of dove to try to, try to break that up and I, I, he might have went in pretty hard I, I haven't looked at the video too closely but it's I'm guessing he went in hard dude. and <laughs> was getting up slowly the first time I looked at that picture I didn't notice the guy in the background but I always say winning's the opposite of losing and it was quite apparent in that picture and then you see the fans all right up at the glass I used to love that at the big blue tent when the fans are standing right at the glass isn't that fun yeah, it's good. They got a good standing area and they're always banging on the glass and having fun. So, uh, yeah, our fans are passionate and they, they pack that storm shelter every home game recently. So it's it's been fun to play at home. <laughs> it would be. Poster pick. You went to a Manchester United game with CJ Garcia, who I still haven't got to the shed. Um, and he is a confirmed shed guy. But also you're with Sully, which... Um, one thing that was wicked cool for me in the shed was pride night. We did get uh, crunchies for Adam. I think it was, um, we got chocolate thrown on the ice for his partner. And I thought that was so hockey. Keep up the good work. Shed family. <laughs> right. But Manchester United game, that was, must've been fun. eh? Yeah, it was cool. It was obviously a, a bucket list thing when I signed in Manchester was I really got to get to one of those football games. So um, yeah, I think, uh, there's just some people within an organization that have ties and if they, uh, they know people with season tickets and if they're not going, we can, we can get hooked up with those tickets. So it was, uh, it was a really good game. They were playing Newcastle. who's who's another pretty solid team in the premier league. Um, and, uh, Manchester lost three, nothing. So that was kind of a disappointing part of the night, but it was still really cool to see like the atmosphere and see just how big that stadium is. It was, a uh, it was a cool experience for sure. Well, and like for me, I mean, I only went to Manchester, I think, one time to play and then one time to do a pregame speech because they were only in the league that my second year. Um, and other than that, I really haven't been to Manchester other than to go to UFC fight. But I watched the documentaries on Netflix about Beckham and Rooney and like Manchester United. And I'm like, man, that's the same city that throws chocolate on the ice because of the shed. <laughs> it's like, I think it's really neat because <laughs> those are some yeah, no. big franchises they got around there, eh? Yeah, they've been they've been famous, world famous for a long time. So, um, it's it's cool to kind of have that right here in our backyard and be able to go to see go see some of those games. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Other poster pick is um the one at the old course. I think it's St Andrews on the bridge with the fellas. Yeah. I thought it was funny because when you guys were all taking those pictures, <laughs> Greggy from the Greggy bus, he texted me a picture of it. It says. Why every year do the guys have to take a picture on this bridge? <laughs> the Swilkin Bridge. It was it was really right? cool. That was on our it's, uh, yeah, it's on, a famous bridge. That was, on, that was on a Scot on our Scotland road trip. I think I forget which game we were going to, but we were kind of driving by it, and um, so we stopped in at St Andrews and grabbed a coffee and walked around the course for 30, 40 minutes, and it was really cool. I think uh, obviously some of the guys had seen it before, but. I don't think it gets really that old for them. And for the guys who hadn't seen it, obviously it was a, uh, it was another kind of bucket list thing coming over to the UK. And um, yeah, so I've got to see a few cool things this year. It is neat when you get traveling around playing hockey, the new things you can see, right? Yeah. This is your first time overseas. It is. Yeah. How's driving on the wrong side of the car? I try to drive as little as possible. Still, still not used to it. Is it a standard car too? We got an automatic. I, I 
I uh, haven't gotten around to learn how to drive the standard. So oh, we have yeah. one, we have one automatic car. So I'm taking the heel toe express. If, uh, <laughs> if somebody's got the automatic. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I had to learn standard in Germany and then, uh, you know, you go over to the UK and then you're doing standard, but on the other side of the car, you're like, Whoa, <laughs> use my left now. <laughs> my problem was always getting in the car. Um, I would go to the wrong side. I would go like, sit down and be like, ah, there's no steering wheel here. <laughs> I'll, I'll still do that some mornings. It's funny. I don't know. I don't know when I'll learn, but you don't, <laughs> I didn't. Um, <laughs> anyways, I'm sure we talked about this last time, but um, I always love talking about winning. You won the Q and the Memorial Cup in junior. Like those must be memories for life, eh? Yeah, um, those will be my my best two hockey memories that I think I'll ever have. Obviously, um, being from uh, just outside of Halifax too, and we we won both trophies in Halifax against Halifax, so it was uh, it was pretty memorable uh, for me to kind of be able to do that in the rink. I grew up going to games and watching games and watching Critchie and stuff. So it was, it was, uh, it was cool to kind of come home and have my family in the building and um, a building that I'd watched hundreds of games that um, kind of be able to come, come full circle and do it as a player was pretty cool. That, uh, that is like a storybook. Um, so that was the team you grew up watching and Critchie did win a Memorial cup with them too, right? With McKinnon and the boys. I think that might have been just after Critchie was gone. I oh, think Critchie kind of Critchie mentored them, and then and they took it home the next year. Right, um, and that that is a part of it, raising the puppies, right? And then they, you know, I'm sure Critchie was leading just like he does now, and then, you know, that is how you build a culture, and then they would win after, right? Yeah. Well, uh, hopefully, you guys can win the playoffs this year, right? And then you'll have a new best memory. Yeah, exactly. We're uh, we'll we'll do our best, make it happen. Um, another small world that I'm sure I brought this up probably maybe if the research team was hot last time, but when you won the Memorial cup, Noah Dobson was on that team. And, um, when I went to an Islanders game, he was the, I remember who gives pucks and stuff to kids. And he was the fellow during warmups that gave my kid a puck at an Islanders game. He's yeah, good, eh? that sounds like Dolly. He's a, yeah, he's a good maritime guy and he's a really nice guy and, um, great player too. Probably, uh, I don't know if he's going to win the Norris, but he's definitely up there in the conversations this year. He's, he's having quite the season. Yeah, that was a few years ago when we went to that game, and he was just like getting into the league then, and I watched him skate and shoot and pass and warm up. I'm like, whoa, who is this kid? He is good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess we went over what we would throw you on the ice after next win. Um, I saw there's only eight games left at home, so... Um, and then playoffs. So it's going to have to get awfully chocolatey here, right? But you, what was yeah. that candy you wanted? We called that uh, Percy Pigs. They're pretty good, but I'll Never eat even anything. heard of uh, that. Cho- cho- chocolate's chocolate. I hadn't heard of it until a couple months ago. Um, yeah, folks, bring all the chocolate. Make it rain. That's all we want, right? And buy your raffle tickets at aleshockeytails.com. Um, you know, we're just trying to keep uh, parody in the league. And I, I'm just sponsoring the storm because uh, Captain Critch started a really fun thing over there and they got a bunch of shed guys on their team and um, it's pretty neat, right? We got the director of shed marketing living there too, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a good spot to be. Why do you wear number nine? I wore it when I was a kid playing minor hockey and um, the numbers that I had worn recently were all taken, so... Mm-hmm. I had, had to pick a new number, so he just went back to the roots. Um, you know what I find weird is um, the jersey numbers in minor hockey these days. Um, when I grew up, it was like number 1 to 30. And um, there wasn't even 1 to 30. There was like 1 to 19, and then the goalie could have 30, right? Um, nowadays, these kids, the jerseys provided are like 97, 86, 87. And you are from Cole Harbor home of Sid the kid um that wouldn't fly around there would it they would not give kids number 87 in minor hockey would they no that must be a recent thing we were always one to 19 and then goalies get 30 and 35 yeah that's why I mean I don't know I wouldn't want to wear 87 I wouldn't want to wear 97 you know (laughs) just thinking out loud yeah yeah, no, I think uh, I think it'd be pretty ballsy to be from anywhere near Cole Harbor and 
wear 87. <laughs> yeah. It's like wearing 99 or 68, right? So some of those, some numbers just, you just shouldn't wear, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got any questions for me while I look at my notes and figure out if the research team got any hotter? Oh, let me think. Um, who are you having on next from the, from the storm? Mm, good question. I have no idea. I'm a day-to-day -day type of a guy. See how your guys' next game goes and see who <laughs> who rings a bell, you know? <laughs> um, actually, my next guest is um, a gal that just won the silver with Team Great Britain. Okay, uh, very cool. Yeah, and the uh, under-18s, I believe. Um, so, yeah, gal that uh, actually was roommates with another shed gal, Miley Drazy, my gal from Cardiff. They were roommates with Team GB once. Um, so shed gals, okay, no shed gals, cool. you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but girls hockey is really, uh, it's interesting, right? Because men's hockey kind of is what it is. There's the leagues there are. Um, there's the paths you can go, uh, but girls hockey is really taking off. And after coaching you nine gals last year and having so much fun, and then you see the potential and you see this new pro league and how many fans are going, it's, it's pretty neat. What's out there for the women's game now, you know? Yeah. That new PWHL is pretty cool. Um, I think they nearly sold out the, uh, the Toronto rink there, um, I think they set set some sort of female hockey record, um, and they've uh, yeah. It seems like that that new league is having a lot of success, and um, with the time change, I, I haven't got to watch many uh, North American pro sports this year, so no, um, I, I have I haven't watched any of those games yet, but I've heard they're pretty exciting and pretty fast, and um, good for them. Well, they're mucking it up harder than the men, actually. <laughs> um, they are mucking it up harder than the NHL games, from what I've seen. There's they they're near they're not even allowed to hit, and they're hitting more than the NHL players. Um, but I think it's neat, like when you see like all these small towns and how many girls are playing hockey now. That there's a pro league that they can go as a team or as a family and go watch girls play professional hockey, and um, I think it's a game changer. Yeah, I think that's always that was always kind of one of the main points of why they needed a league was because you need to be able to kind of see what the end of the road is and see see it to believe it kind of thing. And I think that's that's obviously like a really good thing for all the young girls around the world and North America and stuff that to, to have that pro league close to home and and be able to kind of see those games and see that that's a, that's a reality for them. I agree. You got to be able to see it to believe it, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. So, do you have a pregame meal? Yeah, I keep it simple, just chicken and rice. Pretty pretty boring. Chicken and rice. You got a sauce on there? You, you, no. Uh usually just get the uh boneless, skinless uh chicken thighs, throw some salt, pepper, and paprika on them, and that's about it, really. Mm -hmm. Pretty boring. Yeah. Well, and you know, that seems healthy and like you'd be ready to go, eh? Um, I'm not sure what else I have today other than I got a random question. So you know how Mikey Coral has Jake and he's got like his fan. Um, do you have a favorite fan in Manchester? Is there anybody that's really taken a shine to you? Do you have like a creepy stalker neighbor like I had in Cardiff? <laughs> I don't think so. I think obviously uh, you, you get notifications on social media and stuff and there's definitely uh a lot of support. I, I don't know if there's anybody that I've really met that uh, that's kind of on the level that Jakey is with Mike. Um, but uh, no, the, the fan support in Manchester has been awesome. Um, they've kind of um, been behind us unconditionally through, through the highs and the lows that, that we've had this season. Um, there's been highs and there's definitely been lows. Um, but I think uh, it's nice to have a fan base that just support you and they, they don't kind of start shitting on you when, Shit hits Things the don't fan, and yeah. so it's uh it's been really nice to kind of have that kind of support, and and we definitely appreciate it as a team. I couldn't agree more. The you see it on the social media, especially when you're over the side of the pond, and you see what some fan base is right when their team's not playing well, and it's just to me, it's so disgusting, and it just hurts because I know what it was like. I was on teams where the fans were like euphoric and you couldn't do anything wrong because you're winning. And then as soon as you're like in Beatingheim, I was on the same team. Our budget goes way down. It's like, we don't have the same money we used to. We don't have the same players. Why are you getting so mad? How can you not realize that we're not as good as we used to be? Like, why can't you support us and be a fan instead of be so angry? <laughs> you know? 
it means a lot when fans yeah. have your back. Yeah, we haven't had to deal with that kind of uh, that kind of negativity um, very much. Obviously, like we said earlier, like you're going to lay an egg from time to time, and and you try to limit those to to as little as possible. We've we've laid a few eggs this year, but even through the through those times. Um, it's been more of a, uh, the, uh, you can just get them next game kind of attitude instead of just shitting all over us. So that's it's, all you uh, can yeah. do, right? Pick yourself yeah, up they've... and dust yourself off and get back at her. <laughs> yeah, no, the fans have been great. Uh, it's that it, it, for me, I mean, I just, every time you guys win and I see all the chocolate, I just like, I can't believe that it's all happening <laughs> and it's still happening. And that the way that it's all started, it's like, when I started this two ales and hockey tails, I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew I wanted to see my friends and talk hockey and give them a memory. And then to see all this fun stuff that's happened and it's you guys going out there and doing it. And then all the other shed guys I've had on that go out there and run mucks. It's, it's pretty neat to see what goes on in the hockey world, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's fun to be a part of for sure. Um, well, um, I hope you guys make it rain these last eight home games and then get rolling into the playoffs and don't play Cardiff. And then both teams can head to playoff weekend and I can be a fan of everybody, right? <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Yeah. And don't forget your raffle tickets, folks, at aleshockeytails.com and help me pay my bill, right? Because I said I would, right? <laughs> Even if you don't want my two ales and hockey tails jersey, my made up team with Walton 18 on the back, right? <laughs> but seriously, keep up the good work there in Manchester because the reason I wanted to have you back on was I see what's going on. Um, and I see like the bond you and Critchie have on the ice, and I see you guys celebrating each other's goals as much as your own. And I think that's what it takes to win. I think that's what builds a culture is when you know, the guys celebrate other guys' goals just as hard as their own. And I see that happening through the photos I see, you know? Yeah, no, it's, it's been fun. We have a, we have a good team culture and obviously uh, Critchie's the spearhead of that um, with his energy and the attitude he brings to the rink every day. So um, it's been fun, fun to play with him and um, not only as a teammate, but a line mate. So hopefully we'll keep that going. Yeah. And hopefully you guys can keep her going for the next two years, right? Yeah. We just got to keep Critchie going, right? Cause that guy plays a ball of energy, it seems like, from the photos. <laughs> My favorite pi hockey picture ever still is where he's punching, about to punch the guy in the face in front of the net, and when he's standing there like, oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what pitch you're talking about. He, uh, yeah, Critchy uh, plays like he's 20 years old and full of piss and vinegar every night, so it's uh, it's refreshing to see. He doesn't doesn't let that age creep in on him. Yeah, no, and um, honestly, I understand why Manchester would announce that you're coming back for two years where other teams may not. It's because they want to let everybody know we have a good thing here. We have good people coming back, and we have them coming back for multi-years, and um, I think it helps with recruiting when they let everybody know they got guys like you coming, you know? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, keep up the good work, sir, and uh, let's make it rain chocolate. <laughs> like a and this has been another episode of two ales and hockey tales with Heine and wally <laughs>